Hey, what's up everybody? Good morning, International Master William Pascal. We're going to be playing Weird Wednesday stream here. It's Blitz and Classical Chess with, uh, with an attempt to play unusual openings when we can. So, gambits, fun openings that I normally wouldn't have in my repertoire, stuff like that. Nothing, nothing too ridiculous like 1h4 or f3 or the bong cloud or whatever. Um, but we need to play some some different stuff that we wouldn't normally play. I think it just makes it fun, something different, not to play the same stuff every every Blitzstream. Arsenal fan, oyster people. Um, just having some fun in the chat there before we started messing around. Had a little too much coffee this morning, I think. I'm getting, I'm fully caffeinated and I'm getting a little bit silly, but it was good. It was good to be awake. Um, all right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna play um, Morales first. He's been waiting for a challenge. World users here. All right, guys, let's get it started. Morales is up. Um, he's been improving, I think. You know, his rating is like twenty one fifteen, but he won the viewer tournament a couple weeks ago. By the way, we had a viewer tournament last night. For those of you who just joined us, um, I did win. Morales gave me a run for my money, but I was in pretty good form. Um, the uh, the thing was there weren't that many high-rated players. Sometimes unicorns and a few stronger 2,200-plus players play. But um, yesterday, I think only Halligator was the only other player rated over 2,200. And he only played a few games. Um, Halligator, World Loser, they didn't seem like they were able to play the whole tournament, so... I was able to take it down. <clears throat> What's up, World Loser? Speak of the devil. You only played like three games in the viewer tournament. I guess you have a life. Knight of 3, G6, C4. Um, all right, now, I don't remember. Does Morales usually play the English opening? That doesn't seem like his normal rep. Let's go ahead and transfer to a symmetrical English. I can also play the modern King's Indian. Um, pretty much the modern King's Indian. Well, the modern in general, like if white goes knight of 3 g6, I'm obviously allowing e4. However, there I oftentimes transpose the Sicilian as well. Since I do play the hyper-accelerated dragon with e4, c5, and g6, it gives me some flexibility. This is basically like my normal repertoire. I can't remember. Maybe we have played this before. Um, I definitely had this against um, several players here on the stream. I usually, yeah, I really shouldn't have, well, actually, this is okay for me, because I haven't played knight c6 yet. This is actually, Oligas would always do this in blitz, and it's actually not very accurate for white on ICC, the rook versus rook flag master from Latvia, Krivonosov, he, he would always, like, flag me with rook versus rook. Um... He would play this every time with white, except he would play e3 there. Knight c2 is probably the best move, Morales. This is the the like correct way to play. I mean, it's like a chicken move to play e3. You've got to go for it, allow the double pawns. It's a reverse Rubenstein English. But I think the white has to be really pretty well versed in this position. I'm not sure it's even good. Once my friend had this position against, like, Ilya Smirin, and he... Smirin was basically, like, begging for a draw after 15 moves. But I guess, theoretically, it's... It's okay for white. <clears throat> Queen d3 is a new one. I've never actually seen that here. seems like he might be walking into the path of my knight, you know, like knight here, knight here, knight here. But I'm not sure if I have time for that maneuver anyway. Not playing this opening that regularly, I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert on any openings, really. But it's one of many things that I've played off and on. <clears throat> These positions with both colors. Um, 
yeah, and like it was weird to see early Ilya Smirin like clueless in the early stages of an opening, but <clears throat> he had a bad position and got a draw. That was a long time ago, though. He was always strong. Um, Queen d3, knight f6 here. Morales said, what, you hate your position already? Well, that's normal. Um, you know, it's it's not a pleasant line to play, really. But, you know, if you are really, really well-versed in it, I guess you can, can make something happen. Um, this seems kind of logical. f3 to keep me off of e4. Set up a Marazzi. I like to attack the C-pawn, but it's not so easy. Easier said than done. No, Morales, I don't think you should hate your position. I think it's, uh, it's, it's the way it's supposed to go. But I'm not sure about Queen D3. I know, like, Queen D2 and Bishop D2 are moves. Queen D3 seems like the Queen is more exposed there, but obviously I have Knight E5 at some point. I'm not sure. It might make a difference, right? If I can hit your queen with tempo and double attack the c4 pawn, you're going to be sorry. Obviously, we have some threats. He can protect his pawns, though. You know, as I was saying, this position exists with colors reversed in the normal Rubenstein variation of the English. White has to be very inventive, you know, Arsenal fan. But yeah, there are there are assets in the white position that he can he can make make use of. It's just that it's harder to play. I think you know it's harder for white to coordinate than it is for blacks. Focus is very simple. I'm just like blockading and and attacking his isolated pawns. It's much easier to play for black than for white. He has to constantly be on the lookout for tricks. Now he played bishop h6. <clears throat> That's actually a move that looks a little bit suspicious. I haven't committed to castling. I don't think rook g8 is even a real threat. I would gladly, you know, not happily, but okay. I, I wouldn't mind him playing bishop g7. As long as I'm just not losing a pawn for nothing on d6. Which he can't take anyway because of the c3 pawn, so... I mean, theoretically, I could even castle queenside here. I'm just not sure my king is really safe. Knight, knight e5, queen d4, I suppose, is is okay for him. We can pile up on the c4 pawn again with, like, rook c8. But by that time, he's pressuring us. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to play rook g8 and stop bishop g7. I'm not going to be able to castle, obviously, unless I go queenside, which is dangerous because of the open b-file, but it's feasible. I'm not sure. I thought knight e5, queen d4 is actually pretty okay for white. I want to be able to bring my queen back here, maybe. There's also the threat of trapping his bishop. Not easy to execute. Okay, now, yeah. His bishop is awkward, isn't it? Queen h5. There's nothing I can really do. Queen h5, bishop f4 is fine. Knight d7, knight d5. He's obviously coming with knight d5, which is a classic kind of idea here. g5 doesn't do anything. It threatens, threatens cheapos, like trapping his bishop. But I think if g5, he can just play h4. <clears throat> g5, h4. That doesn't seem good for me. <clears throat> I 
If I try to bring my other knight to e5, what would happen? This is not so easy. Try to bring maximum pressure on c4. However, I don't want to see this pawn take and then like a check on b5 with his white square bishop becoming good again. Just repeating moves here, try to sort out what I'm doing. He can also play queen d2. Maybe that's actually... Maybe I actually helped him. I don't know. Queen, queen might actually be better placed on d2 than it was on d3. Difficult to say, though. He won't have queen b5 check in that instance. <coughs> Ninety five is coming. I don't know what to do here. Very difficult to coordinate. He can obviously play knight d5. Looks like white's better probably now. This is a great move. Threatening to trap my queen, avoiding knight b3. He's suddenly extremely well coordinated. But still we're solid. I hope. It's not actually threatening anything. That's a strong knight on d5. I guess I could play f5 to break his center, but I'm not coordinated enough for that. It's kind of like playing a Nimzo. <coughs> 
I think like like I said he probably had a very good position but it's much harder to play still he has some compensation Wow um All right, tough game. I don't know. Um, pretty typical for this kind of variation. Seems like at his best, though, he had a promising position. So apparently, Queen D three is is only played in like eleven games. F three is a new move. You can just play E four straight away. But it's not a bad move. The F three looks like he was better at some moment here queen h6 you had that's pretty hard to meet we're just sack a pawn for the initiative all right guys welcome i'm supposed to be playing weird openings today and i totally forgot we always do that every week all right never mind we're going to be playing unusual openings today i forgot it's always hard to do that against knight f3 though but my bad okay um Yeah, I'm supposed to play unusual openings today. Alright, we're losers up next. The Mule Skinner Arsenal fan, Dirty Cheater, Diva Karan. Um, I'm going to play the subscribers first. GM. GM Clash, good morning. Hmm. Sorry, I always forget every week when I'm doing the unusual opening stream. I know that it's an unusual opening stream, and then, and then the first game starts, and I'm just like so focused on the game that I forget what I'm supposed to do. So I've got knight f3 and g3 against which I'm supposed to play unusual openings. Probably like the toughest moves to do that against. Non-committal sort of moves. We could play h5. I think it's actually justified against g3. Shirazi would do this with white, like e4, g6, h4. Um, you can basically do this. Okay, h4 is the standard answer from World Loser. I think I'll play um, a reverse Shirazi, <clears throat> basically. Reverse modern, reverse modern defense, more or less. But maybe I can turn it into a kind of closed Sicilian. Something like g6, bishop g7. That's what it's going to become. I think you can also do a5 against b3. They're not unsound or like ridiculous things to do. I, I, I like to play b3, a5. I, I did that on the stream once. I never really like looked it up in the database to see if, you know, how many grandmasters have ever, ever played like b3, a5. But I can pretty much tell you with certainty that they have. Now, world loser with the quick, the quick knight f3. Um, that's fine by me. I mean, it's more typical probably. Uh, this is weird. I mean, I can play f6, so. Shouldn't be a big concession <clears throat> to kick him out now, you know, as it would be in, in many positions. I think either way, his knight is kind of weird, like going back there, knight e4 or knight h3. He could lob a knight into d5, which makes me not want to play bishop e6 so much. It's so strange that he's got this knife floating around there with no square to go to if it was attacked, but... It 
just a very amorphous sort of position. Um, the other knight can come into to d5. That's that's a little annoying, but I'm going to go with this knight f7 to protect my my f g5 square in the event of like a future knight coming back to g5. Very natural deployment by white. I didn't know World Loser played the English opening. He's usually playing d4 type of stuff. Now I can play f5, but it's probably too early. Amazing how strong he plays with it without using any time. Okay, if I played f5, knight g5, knight takes g5, bishop takes g5, it's going to be awkward no matter what I do. I like White's position here, the way he coordinated with the knight. I would think you'd be playing the English opening all your life for a loser. Though I'm not sure it's necessary. <coughs> like, I actually thought you should leave it there and maybe start whipping the b-pawn down the board. He plays the Sicilian defense, which is basically the same thing as the English opening. Um, now he's trying to play, like, knight b5 to double attack c7 or something. can guard with rook c8 if I have to. But I like white better. He's got very con good control of d5. It seems like he's better coordinated. It, it feels like I'm playing chess 960 again. I never play the closed English, really. And um, I used to when I was like a my first few years of learning the game, I used to play the closed English all the time, like c4, e5, knight c6 with black. Sometimes I'll play um, the reverse Grand Prix attack, which is a form of, of the same opening. Basically, it's, it's just a closed Sicilian. Now we have some issues. Ninety seven seems to just allow him to to mess me up. Actually nothing looks especially good here. He said he doesn't play the English opening. What do you call this? He's playing it like perfectly. I just hate my position. Strategically, black is almost lost here. Ninety seven, he just takes and puts another knight on d five. Maybe that's better than what I did though, I don't know. I'd have to give up my white squared bishop. I can't afford to do that. It's not safer though. I mean he just chops on e seven and another one's coming to d five. Maybe. But it's like, okay, and then what do I do? I don't know, Plucro. A four is really I was scared of Queen A four. Just simply like targeting my A-pawn. Seems like the text move is is a little slower. Giving us a chance to get away to some degree. I still don't feel comfortable because I don't play the closed Sicilian. 
I don't think I'm ever going to be trying this again. How did I let him get like a good English going on? h5, h4. He takes time to play h4 and then e5, bishop g2, knight c6, c4. I guess I should have played something more direct like bishop c5 or something like that. Rather than the g6 was too slow. Maybe I should omit knight c6, just play bishop c5 immediately. Okay, I mean, this Shirazi opening, like, he would do it with white, e4, g6, h4, with mixed results. Some people play it against the Sicilian Accelerated Dragon. You can do very early h4. World Loser, I had a6, but your queen is protected um, by the knight on c3. So, like, even endgames I wasn't really crazy about there. If a6, pawn takes pawn. Um... Queen a4, a6, pawn takes pawn, queen takes queen, knight takes queen, pawn takes, like, I still thought I was worse. Maybe not. <clears throat> no clue what I'm doing. White's coordination is, is awesome. He just blundered. His only flaw is that he plays too fast sometimes. Wasn't paying attention. I'm allowed to have a threat like once in the game. did manage to pick up two pawns, which doesn't hurt. Guys, weird opening today. Um, that's why I played h5 on move one. I don't think I would normally do that. But in Blitz, it's fun. Yeah, I think it's time to castle. The world loser is very resilient. Um, being down a couple pawns won't phase him too much. Do have a5 here. <coughs> Which will force him back, basically. Although, there's some drawbacks to this as well. Taking over the center. He's still got a minute more than me. Do I win a piece here? Yeah, it looks over. piece up and all of our pieces are going to filter in on the B file. But he doesn't give up and I'm not going to like, I'm not going to um, let my guard down here because I'm a piece up. It's not so easy. Unfortunately that move, I probably, I'm going to have to chop that guy. Give him an exchange.
this may take take some work was definitely not supposed to get this complicated. <laughs> what a game. I just like up a clear piece and he almost beat me. Because of the time pressure. Can't wait to see how many sent upon loss I had. <clears throat> yeah, I went a little too far. Um, it was fortunate when he promotes. I still got everything under control. I wonder if I was just lost in one moment. Probably it's not so clear. Taking a while to get the computer analysis going here. Um, I like to see a lot of black. A lot of black here in the black. But 61 cent upon loss is not too good. A little short of time there. All right, guys, that was entertaining at least. Mule Skinner, Arsenal fan. And then Clash Kid and the rest of you guys. Blunderful night. Blunderful game. That was a blunderful game. Um, we were a little bit too low on time. Alright, unusual opening stream. So, alright, I was, I was thinking last week about how to play the Blumenfeld with colors reversed. Maybe I'm too obsessed with this concept. Not the Blumenfeld, the Budapest. I'm getting them confused. I was working on a video about the Blumenfeld. Not Blumenfeld and Budapest both start with B. Um, we'll start with A3. Yeah, at least it was fun. Soltico, good to have you back. I hope all is well. A3, E5. No more Budapest Gambit. You could play the, um, we can play the, the Scandinavian with an extra move. <coughs> it's pretty useful, I would imagine. I can play a Scandinavian with a6, so a queen, queen d3 Scandinavian, or queen d6 Scandinavian, with an extra move in hand. Comes from the Reti Advanced. The Advanced Reti. You could even play knight f3. Um, but I think a3 is a little weird there. Knight f3, c5. Now I've played a3. I don't really want to play the like Icelandic gambit with that. Probably I should take with the queen and put it on d3. So there's no knight b4 ideas. And improved... Queen d6 Scandinavian. No reverse Fred defense. Now the one other time I played this, I think I had a bad game, like I lost. 
here on the stream a couple months ago, maybe in the spring last year, I don't remember. But I do recall having tried this one other time, and for some reason it didn't work out. I'm pretty sure I lost. What's up, guys? In the chess world, what's going on in the billionaire, the billionaire chess convention? Queen D3, St. Louis. I haven't followed that at all, but I've been busy working. Um, does anybody understand why Queen D8 is better than Queen A5 the normal Scandinavian? I don't think it's better. Um, I think that's a that's a fantasy. Um, anyone who claims that is just like a slave to fashion. So basically, Mule Skinner playing against my like Fianchetto type of ideas. Often you do like an extended Fianchetto. I think that the Queen D8 is just some some fashion because some some dude wrote a book about it, but um, it's actually not better than the other moves. It's just more passive. I mean, it's certainly playable. It had a bad reputation because some some game where like Robach lost to Fisher probably I don't know but but objectively like it's it's completely playable but I don't see how like one Scandinavian with Queen A5 is worse than Queen D8 or Queen D6 is also they're all interesting but I, I would be least inclined to play Queen D8 people just like it because it's like not as analyzed to death as the other lines um, I don't think it's better here we're going with Knight C6 this bishop will have to come out to g5, I guess. If he doesn't do knight f6, if he does something like knight e7, you know what? Maybe I was too quick to play knights, knight c3 here. <clears throat> well, now it's okay. Had he played knight e7, though, I would have been a little concerned about like what I'm doing with this guy because my bishop can't really go to g5. <clears throat> According to the engine, it's the better move. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of things are better moves. If you let it run for like an hour, it will have a different opinion about the position. I'm not sure. <clears throat> You'd have to check with other engines, not just Stockfish. I mean, like, Houdini is the world computer champion. Um, I don't know. You know, like, the other different engines might have different programs that feel differently about like maybe maybe stockfish just really hates like when you develop the queen early or something but it's hard to believe that it's inferior inferior to play queen a5 i think this is probably like a normal variation i don't see how i can take on f6 objectively and and justify it but i would definitely get second opinions from other chess engines before being conclusively sure if one variation of the scandinavian is is better than another um I don't know. You know, it's hard it's hard for me to accept that it could be it could be worse than Queen D eight. That's probably why Queen D eight is trending. Things like that, people people's engines think it's better. You know, Skinner going with, with a quick G four. And it, okay, it's like a King's Indian. Um <clears throat> looks looks valid. You can play knight h five. I'm a little worried about that knight h5 and um, where am I going to put my king e4 it's kind of risky the pawn would be vulnerable along the e-file here so we're playing more positionally more conservatively I should say not positionally but I don't want to put my, my pawn on e4 here. 
It seems like this position should be it should be about equal, but I'm surprised by this regrouping. Mule Skinner um, just leaving that knight, dropping it back. All right, I didn't expect that. I don't know what's up here now. It almost makes me want to play e4. <coughs> He's going after knight f5 and trying to pick up my bishop on g3. I mean, I expected something like knight h5 in the first place. You know, this, this would have been like a standard kind of move, right? It's more efficient than moving the other knight around to try to get the bishop. This takes a lot of time. I don't know if he's just going here. I don't seem to have anything special though with white. What do I do? What's my plan here? Knight d4 with no threats. I could play like a6 if I try to do that. If I just develop a piece with bishop e2 maybe. This is the only way, I, I mean, I could play e4, but then again, he can go for my bishop with the other, with the other guy, so I guess I'll just develop a piece. It's a pretty quiet line, really. I have nothing crossed the third rank here. Um, I'm basically playing very solid, solid Karo Khan type of structure, except with the knight on c3. Both sides playing conservatively. We were not like crossing our, our third rank. Well, Mule Skinner has a pawn on the fourth rank, but nobody's crossing the line. Of, there's like this line of demarcation and nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to go over the border. Um, the Dvoretsky's end, end game manual, you're done with it. I haven't read the Dvoretsky end game manual is it appropriate for beginners or is it too advanced? Now we have to start considering h4, but g4, knight d4, knight h5, I don't really like a lot. Castle's queen side. If knight d4, a6, threatening c5 in some positions. So I basically don't know what to do here. Um, it's good. Castles. Seems like I'm walking into a King's Indian attack. Castle's queen side seems really risky. All right, we'll do this. I'm not sure about it. <coughs> it looks like a6, knight b3. Something like that. I'm trying to play h4 sometimes. Or just maybe castle when he can't play like knight h5. But I really wish my c-pawn was on c4. Then my position would be pretty good. But without the pawn on c4, it feels like I don't have enough pawn control in the center. Here, um, he plays a6. I play like knight b3. I can recirculate my knight like boing, boing, boing to c4. Perhaps... But I've really got to watch out for his queenside pawn phalanx not getting out of control with like c5. He could also simply play something like d5, I guess. Although here maybe I have knight b5, I don't know. <clears throat> Definitely not for beginners. Alright. My favorite endgame book is, is the classic endgame strategy by Sharashevsky. Basically, I only studied that and, and uh, Paul Carries' Practical Chess Endings. With those two books, 
you know, I was a competent endgame player. A few other, like, books, but not too much. Portish wrote a really good collection of Rook endgames. I think I stole that from the chess club. Bishop g4. <clears throat> Alright. Well, white square bishop exchange is risking, it's kind of risking black's white squares a little bit. All right, well, we'll just play conservatively here. If I take his knights, seeming like it's jumping out to an active, an active place. I don't know which way to take here. This way. I have like very little control of the center in that case. Now my knight is still sitting here badly blocking my C pawn, but <clears throat> I don't know, it's nothing for white, I think, this position. He could still play knight h5. Actually, no, I have bishop h2 now. Both sides have been like super conservative in this game. Now maybe castling queen side's not quite as stupid as it was before, but I still I still don't really trust it. It's just too easy for him to like launch his pawns against me if I try to castle queen side. I, I don't want to do that. But I don't have any advantage. playing intuitively. Okay. Um, what does this look like? I don't know what opening this looks like. Okay, knight, knight d4 with the idea of f5. Hold on a second here. We've got knight d4, knight e5. Let's play this. Getting my pawns on white square, so this b2 pawn isn't hanging all the time. Now he doesn't have knight c4 as well. If I take... That's pretty good for him. Black's pretty active, though. I mean, it's, it's an equal game, I guess. <coughs> Uh oh. I don't like e4, this e4 knight coming in here. This is totally uncool. What do I have to do? Like knight g3 or something? To untangle myself? It's always hard playing Mule Skinner. He's he's uh, an interesting player. Ninety five, ninety three, F three. I have my fair share of weaknesses after this, but we can cover them. You basically just lost in the last two moves. I mean, because of time pressure, giving me the f5 knight, it's suddenly very good for white. You have knight d4, according to the computer. What? Look at that. That's a beautiful tactic. Knight to d4, stopping knight f5. Um, 
Yeah, apparently it was like fully equal at one point after bishop h2. Interesting maneuvering struggle though. I wonder if anybody's actually played my opening. I mean, this had to have been played, right? Ronald DeBleo. This is some. Is that like a Filipino player, I think? Well, Velomirovic did it in 2007. Ever creative. Um, let's see. Velomirovic against some guy. Sorry, some guy. Velomirovic lost to the 2298. It's getting old. G6, though, that's a good move. I mean, G3 is recommended in the normal lines. Um, so why not just do it with black? I think that's a perfectly good reaction. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like he was he was fine. <clears throat> Alright, let's go on to um, the next game against the subscriber. Arsenal fan, I think we lost your challenge. And you're back again. If you guys want to challenge me anything between 5 plus 3 and 7 plus 3, you can create like an increment up to 5 seconds. Create an increment up to 5 seconds. So 5 plus 5, 6 plus 5, whatever you guys want. Um, I've also got a YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. Arsenal fan, uh, let's see, you've been really strong lately. You beat me the last two times, so I don't want to mess around too much, but this is Weird Wednesday. So I'm going to play the Dunst opening. Didn't Bobby Fischer call it? Well, I guess a lot of people think that Velomirovich is a genius. You know, He invented this great system in the Sozin, and he was just a fantastic attacking player. I guess he's still alive. That game from 2007, I haven't, I haven't heard of him. I don't even know how old he is. I mean, he must be, he must be like the same generation as Fisher, I would imagine, and maybe a little bit younger. I'm not sure. So knight f6. Um, <clears throat> how do I, uh, how do I play something unusual here? I know that there's like g4, right? That's just giving away a pawn. Um, I'm not going to do that. What would Richard Rockport do? E3. That's just weird. This bishop really does need to come out at some point, so I guess the main move is D4. This is not a completely unusual opening, it's just an unusual opening for me. Because I don't play the, the, the Trompowski, I don't play the the um, Verisov or the Dunst opening. Now it's a Verisov. <coughs> Black, however, playing C5, which is, I think, a kind of risky move in this situation, allowing me to transpose to, uh, to basically um, Benoni type of situation, which is you know, a good Benoni, more or less, for white. Thinking, what else can I do? I know there are weird lines with, like, bishop g5, pawn takes pawn, queen takes, knight c6. You could try something like that for fun. Let him have a tempo, um, but try to play for active peace deployment. I would always play d5, like, if this wasn't the weird opening stream, d5 is just the best move. We've got another, basically another um, Scandinavian type of thing. This is the theme for the day. Yeah, the Benoni's without c4, it's basically like with a Schmid Benoni, um, and it's, it's a better kind of Benoni where white can use the c4 square for a knight usually. Knight f3, knight, knight d2, knight c4. Um, so. This looks like, <clears throat> excuse me, it can transfer to a Sicilian type of game. I can play e4. I know that Rich is playing the French, so I guess this structure makes some sense repertoire-wise for him.
wonder what I should do. E3. I mean, obviously we can castle queenside <clears throat> and e4. I'm just concerned about like a counter pin with bishop g4, what kind of effect that's going to have on the position, how I should deal with that. Um, you know, a3 looks really bad, just extremely slow. So... Castle and queenside commits my king very early. E3. You know, I, I almost had the same position once against this <clears throat> Vietnamese I am Van Dang, uh, Duang. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Duang. It looks like Duang, but I don't know how that's supposed to sound in Vietnamese. Um, but he had played the Trompowski and, and I had played d5 basically instead of e6. If Richie plays d5, it, it could have transposed um, to my game with that guy whose name looks like Duong. But the Vietnamese pronunciations are really weird and I probably am mispronouncing it. a6 instead just becomes, again, like Sicilian style. Which is fine for black, probably. I wonder if I don't have like some kind of weird knight e4 type of idea here. Which I didn't even think about last move. That's not, not a problem. Well, there are some nasty tricks, I guess. Knight e4. Bishop e7. Knight d6 check. This is the best variation. Knight e4, bishop e7, knight d6, take, take, queen a5 check, winning a piece. Basically setting myself up for that. Okay, so I can take on f6 first. Then play knight d6 check. I'm not sure if this is good. He also has queen a5 check immediately. There I have... Mm, that loses a piece for me, doesn't it? Damn. Queen a5 check immediately. No, I have no moves there. Yeah. Can't do that. Now, I don't know if I like queen h4. I think I should go to d3. Much like last game. Any res resemblance between this and the last game is purely coincidental. I'm not obsessed with putting my queen on d3 and my, my knight on c3 and my pawn on a3. It's just... <clears throat> it's just purely coincidental. I think black's basically played perfectly. Um, although there are other optional different ways he could he could set up. He's chosen one one formation that seems basically perfectly good. Why is e4 discarded? I don't know. Um, I don't think I discarded it. I just felt it was a little bit risky. It's not discarded. Got to think for a second about h4 here. <clears throat> Let's say, for example, h4, d5.
He's got five, six minutes to my one minute. And he hasn't lost the last three times we played. Improving a lot lately. Alright. H4. Am I going to castle? I could just castle. I mean, Bishop H4 is the normal move. But I'm tired of playing passively today. <clears throat> Best move. I don't really think this is sound. H4 and G4. I, I probably... <clears throat> probably should reverse the order of moves and just play like bishop takes s6 here it feels like feels like a concession though oh he's moved already no it was like blinking okay g4 knight takes g4 rook g1 Uh, it's speculative pawn sacrifice. I guess I also have bishop takes e7 and like knight g5. This is um, speculative. Yeah, of course he takes it. Maybe I can play knight g5. Is that crazy? Yeah, pretty much. We're down a pawn. We don't really have enough compensation for it. But we create some chaos, I guess. It's still not too late for me to castle queenside. I think I liked f5 better for black there. This way I have more realistic attacking chances. I think f5 was, was pretty much a pawn up for black without compensation. Here I have some compensation. <clears throat> I didn't really want to trade queens, but um, I don't see how I can really conveniently avoid it. I guess queen g4 there. Safer to just win my pawn back, of course.
looks like a French now, so he can be happy in his favored kind of structure. It's got a defense for everything. It's a little like playing World Loser. We have like no time, but there's a small chance he might make like one big blunder, which will save us. And after all that, I have like a positional advantage. <clears throat> I think I missed a tactic. Bishop takes h7, g6, but no, nah, actually, it would just probably trade a lot of stuff, so I'm not sure if that was such a good idea. Just basically like a Steinitz French, where white has a positional bind. I was looking at rook h7, it's a good thing I didn't do that, because he has rook g7. Just try to systematically improve my position. But this was pretty coffee house. I mean, whoa. I don't even know the best way to proceed here. I mean, bishop takes. Sort of dominating his knight on, on f8, maybe. I wasn't really sure. Problem is now his g-pawn is like running away and I have to be careful to contain it. We do have a huge strategic advantage. Whoa. All right. Um, man. So we're just going into technical modra. Mudra, it's like Mothra. He's cagey. Always finding some kind of trick to stay alive. There's another one. Oops, no bishop c8, don't do that. Oh no. Man, yeah, I really, I really butchered this, this pawn sack in the opening. I don't think this was okay. Um, no games found. <laughs> it's already better for black. I should just play bishop h4. Of course, that's a normal move. I mean, this is a little crazy. He doesn't take, he plays d5, and then, I guess, like, takes on f6 and g4. This was the correct way to play. You know, like in a queen's gambit exchange variation or something like that. And I have something, you know, it's a game, but, but this is crazy. I, I don't know. It wasn't a mouse slip. I mean, I intended to play G4, but I don't know what I was thinking. You know, like I just assumed I had some kind of threats. This doesn't really work. You know, um, I meant, you know, I would, I would do takes first. 
here I don't have enough compensation. You know, I realized immediately when he was thinking about it, you know, that this is stupid. So he could just play f5. I mean, I think f5 is... f5 is just like refuting this sacrifice, um, more or less. This is a... what happened? I missed something. Queen d4, even better. But now I have good compensation. I mean, this is this is like a, a position where I, I did a, a reasonable pawn sacrifice. Um, but the other way with f5, dd root, just probably a clear pawn up. Um, all right, Clash Kid is up next. Yeah, that wasn't sound. Am I getting white every game again? Okay. Uh, I don't know why you guys do that. <laughs> it's all right. Um, against Clash Kid, let's play e4 and see what we can do a little later on. Um, I've been trying to... I've been trying to play... Um, you know, all these, like, move one deviations, knight c3, a3, but we really ought to try to get some interesting games in openings, like, past move one. Something weird about my Twitch channel, it's not displaying how many viewers we have. It looks like they changed, they messed with the, um, it looks like they messed with the Twitch, uh, oh, now it's better, all right. They changed the Twitch layout a little bit. I don't like when they do that. <clears throat> um, okay, Clash Kid. Normally, we take, right? Let's play the... Yeah, I know a guy who plays Knight F3 here. I mean, Black hasn't played C5, so that's, like, really, really dubious. Um... Let's play knight c3 for something different. This is also the dunst opening now. Theme of the day. If I can put my queen on d3 and play a3, we'll be all set. Yeah, Twitch updated, quote unquote, updated the site. In other words, they made it worse. Yeah, I don't like, I don't like it. D4. So, the normal line is knight e2. There was a game where I played knight b1 a while back. But let's go ahead and play the normal move. I remember when I was, when I was a teenager, this guy, Dean Ippolito, who's a international master as well now, has been for years. He was a little kid, he was like a child prodigy. And he used to always play this opening with white, like, every single game when he was, like, 11 years old. I, I remember that. It was his entire repertoire. But it worked, because people don't know what to do against the Dunst opening. Um, actually, probably not a bad opening to teach to little kids to take to the Scholastic tournaments, because nobody, you know, under age 12 probably has a clue. Unless they're, like, Yuri Kurobov or something. Um, all right. E5... So I guess f4 is is book. I'm supposed to play f4, I believe. Clash Kid probably knows this. Mm. Well, you should know it, because you need a Reptor against the Dunst opening. But some people neglect that. Arsenal fan ran out of... How do you say that? Yaffa cakes? Where does that even ex like come from? I don't think I ever heard of a Jaffa cake until like I moved here into Europe. But definitely, I didn't know about Jaffa cakes in in America. Moved here to Budapest in 2004. I've I've been going back and forth ever since. But um, what is a Jaffa cake? It's a UK snack. Okay. It sounds like something that was like imported from somewhere else. Yaf, what is that word? Jaffa. Orange flavored chocolate could oh, those things. Okay. Knight c6 right away. Yeah, that's probably a good move. You can also play No, that's probably like that's probably like the main line actually. Knight c6. Maybe best. I want to turn it into some sort of King's Indian with g3. But it can't ever really be a King's Indian, right? Because Black hasn't played C5, the equivalent of C4. 
it would be a kind of weird Peart's defense if you want to reverse, if you want to make it sound like a King's Indian, I guess. I guess this is theory, but it's not a very well regarded line for white. Okay, this move. I'm actually happy to see that because he needs his white square bishop. Black has pawns on dark. Dark square pawns. He's got white square weaknesses. And I think that bishop is is an important piece. However, if I play d3, he's going to do what? Take, 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 bishop f4. If I play d3, take, take, queen h4, check. That's very, very awkward, sir. So he's basically planning on queen h4, check. Damn. How do you deal with that? Like, can I play king f2? <laughs> That's a good move. d3, take, take, queen h4, check. I guess I can take on e5 and then interpose with a knight on g3. Or I could just play knight takes e5. Knight takes e5, pawn takes e5, and then call his bluff. Yeah, what has he got? He's sacking a pawn. There's some weird lines like take, 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 d3. Pawn takes d3. Queen takes d3, knight g3. Just trading everything. just feels like a concession to take on e5 like I should be developing more forces instead of taking things here but I don't have a lot of choices I mean d3 is just refuted by bishop takes and queen h4 check winning it doesn't win right away I could allow the queen h4 check put my king on d2 but that looks mental imagine playing like d3 take take queen h4 check king d2 with the idea of like c3 king c2 squeaking away over there all right it's totally insane i mean there's got to be a better move taking on e5 knight takes e5 knight takes e5 pawn takes e5 d3 takes on d3 queen takes d3 knight g3 and that's it. All right, whatever, man. I don't know. I don't see it. Seven point three. Um, no, I mean you can do anything between five plus three through seven plus three with a three to five second increment. So if you prefer the five second increment, four second increment, it just has to be between three and five seconds, between five and seven minutes. Um, we used to do eight, eight minute, but I've disengage that possibility. I also have queen a4 check. Um, so d3 is actually not, not very strong. So I'm not sure what he has here. Got the Tetris going on. We form the artist formerly known as Tetris. I could just play queen a4 check. Um, but then c6, I guess. The knight g3 is very forcing because it threatens a piece. I'm basically attacking his bishop and he has to protect it. So therefore he has to trade everything and just be down material. Queen takes g3 check. Pawn takes g3, bishop takes d1, king takes d1. And white should be at least okay. This is the only move that protects e4. You know, I would prefer to you know, I prefer to put my knight on like f4, but he took on d1. I think he should take on g3. We're up, we're up a pawn, and I don't know if black has enough compensation. Of course, the other way, we were up a pawn too.
little tricky getting coordinated here, but we have pressure on on the F7 pawn. Should I castle or just play rook f1? Castle seems sort of stupid. There's knight h6 though, that looks kind of dangerous. Knight h6, knight g4 in some lines. Alright, I'm just too low on time again. You guys are super fast. Even Clash Kid, who complains he doesn't like to play fast, now has like four minutes more than me. Um, these are totally new positions for me, so it's not like I can play from experience. I mean, I never play the Dunst opening. I'm just inventing this as I go along. That's why I'm using so much time. If this was an opening that I played on a regular basis, it wouldn't be an issue. B3... I'm not sure about this. My intention was to play rook f1, but I didn't really like knight h6. And this move creates some interesting complications. It might eventually make it impossible for him to play knight h6 without dropping a piece due to d4. g6, d4. I mean, I could even sacrifice a piece. Bishop b4, check. Bishop d2, take, 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 take. With a massive center for white. Um, <laughs> that's sort of insane. Sacking my knight to create this, like, three pawns in the middle. He's got three minutes. Castles is always his idea. But I guess he's concerned about his pawn on f7. My pawn is just three moves from promoting. And this bishop will help, you know, help escort it down, hopefully. If nothing else, at least my bishop on f7 should cause some inconvenience. I'm undeveloped, undeveloped, underdeveloped, but I'm up two pawns, and uh, it's kind of an unclear situation. I like the way he plays, though, you know, just peace activity, total coordination, um, materials not important. I almost lost on time to the guy who claims that he doesn't like to play Blitz. I was just debating between d4 and other moves and stuff. can't just be losing my center for nothing, but it looks like black is okay here. You can only take back one pawn at a time. It's like equal now. I guess I'm slightly worse. Well, I am still up a pawn, temporarily, so I can't really be worse. I don't know how long I can hold on hold on to this pawn, though. Probably not. Not forever. We 
Yeah, best move again. Barely clinging to my extra pawn. That's the best move too. Technical rook ending, I mean... I am slightly better. Maybe he played a little too fast. Mm, king in the center, look at that. Look at that king. What a blockader. Unbelievable. Truly expert endgame technique by Black. He should be holding on here. If I drop my pawn for nothing, I'm actually in trouble. But okay, now he blundered. Now it's a mess. You've got a good king, but you're still going to be down a pawn. He was a little too impatient there. Oh no. Well, this should be a win for me. Damn. It's not so easy. Why don't I play King D2? I'm not sure this is winning. Maybe maybe I misplayed the queen side. Oh, that's a bad move though. H5. Just serious mistake. I think this might be a draw. I mean, your king position is so good. Wow. So this end game, man, this is a uh, this is beyond my ability to to figure out in a blitz game. Too many pawns on the board to be like a table base. Black has such a massive king position here. But I don't know. Pawn down in a king and pawn in game, you might not be lost. It's hard to say though. The computer says like h5 is critical. I mean, the king side is your stronger side, I guess, so it makes sense to move a pawn there, but. Certainly not easy to find. He had a clear win at one point. Wow, what? Oh, God. Bishop takes e3. Totally overlooked it. So did he. So he is winning by one move. NM Licker Mark. Plucro. Um, I am taking the subscribers first. All right, guys. Plucro is our last subscriber for now. I'm streaming for another hour. Plucro.
it's like a a Divoretsky King and Pawn game. I couldn't pretend to figure that out. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Who Yi fan would probably like lose that drawn King and Pawn game against like Magnus Carlsen or something? I mean, it's really, really hard. Okay, no normal openings today. I've run out of things to play against Blue Crow. If I play e5 and come up with something creative on move 2, maybe. No more Latvian, though. I did that, like, the other last week or something, and I don't think I can handle, like, playing the Latvian more than once in a month. Um, it's so unsound. I don't think I can do it. Last time, was it against Plu Crow? Maybe it was against Mule Skinner I played the Latvian. I keep trying to do this weird Petrov line. I think against somebody I played d4, d5 last time. And uh, that's like a Bronstein suggestion, I think, in 200 open games. But I wanted to play this. I did this once and messed it up. Um, this is the move that computers do if you turn their opening books off. And I always thought that was just a joke. But now there are people actually playing this. There's, there's like one Russian master in particular who's like playing this on a regular basis um, it appears to be playable for black and like actually like Clash Kid was talking about earlier <coughs> the computer engines claiming or the stockfish claiming that like queen d8 scandinavian is better than queen a5 um, in the same way like stockfish says that queen e7 is just as good as d6 in the petrov so it's hard to believe, I mean, you know, this awkward move, but I think, I think I played something stupid last time. Um, no, I messed it up last time. I took back on c6. This is the move, not taking on e4, but playing knight c6. And last time I did something ridiculous when I tried this. I don't know, but Harry Lyman, this old master from Boston, used to play that in Blitz. Um, the e4, d5 takes in c6. I don't know what it's called. Harry was the only person I ever met who played that. Once one of my friends faced it in a tournament game, I remember that. He just like took and played like knight takes c6, bishop b5 or something. The other guy was a weaker player, so it wasn't a big deal, but, you know, I would imagine that kind of gambit is very effective. Lyman used to play a lot of Blitz, and uh, in the days before they even, probably even <laughs> before they had clocks, um, they had these weird timers on these old chess tables that were, like, not even clocks. They just, like, went around in a circle. Um, but I call it the Lyman Gambit. You're going to go knight c4. Ah, now you can't do that. You feel free to play knight c4 if you want to. But the question is, like, against this queen e7, is it better to play just, like, knight f3? Or is it better to play d4? And it's not clear which is better. There have been some games here. Um, black score is pretty okay. So... It seems like an alternative to the to the normal lines of the Petrov that's actually playable. It's called the Blackburn Gambit. Interesting. N M Liquor Mark. It sounds like Liquor Mart. Making me thirsty. Alright, knight to c6. Right, okay, um, what's the deal with this now? I have to take on e5, take back, and then when they go f4, queen e6, I believe. Does that make sense? But it would be good to know the theory in this position. 
This must be the critical continuation, Plucro. But I can't remember what I'm supposed to do. I think it's F4, Queen E6, and this, this Russian guy who's played this has survived these these variations on a couple of occasions. I think he might have even played it with with white. He actually could be it could be a correspondence player. I've seen the games in the Lee Chess Opening Explorer. Um, a lot of times, some games are are correspondence games. It could be something they they did in a thematic tournament in, in correspondence. Yeah, unfortunately, like there's no time for this type of stuff, or is there? Well, I mean, like Queen A five, Bishop D two. That looks problematic. I think that's why we have to play queen e6. Queen e6 is kind of creeping me out too, though. Because of c7. Okay, he doesn't have... Now I have bishop b4. I gotta get my bishop outside the pawn chain. If e5, d6. And we just try to undermine the e4 pawn. I don't remember seeing like queen f3 in one of the games that I had gone over. This is a reasonable development. Now it's starting to look like a scotch or something. D5. D5 castles. So we only live once. Let's go for it. Living on the edge. Plucro playing an Albin, no, um, Falkbeer, sorry. A Falkbeer style pawn sacrifice. But I have a check. Whoops, has been called. Now, I don't know, maybe I should be careful here not to um, not to grab this pawn on d5. We'll just let him have that. <laughs> and, and then I don't want to give him checks and whatnot. He has a check on b5. I'm not that scared of that. Bishop d7 should be okay. Maybe intermezzo? It should be five check bishop d7 d6. Is there anything here? Yeah, the engine says king f8 or c6. I can just play c6. Okay, that's a good sensible thing to do. You were talking about c6 anyway. Let's just get out of here. So, opening um, questions. Yeah. So right, this is the guy Afro Mayev. Is this a correspondence player? Or is this, it kind of has to be a regular player because like Alexander Zaitsev Jr. sounds like a real player. Um, it could be correspondence. The rating's awful high. Has anybody ever heard of this guy, Afromeyev? Um, Afromeyev. D takes e5, he's got a whole bunch of games. Queen takes e5, f4. Queen e6. This Nomen Erdane against Czechlitsov probably was played here in Hungary. Queen d4. So bishop d3, ah, best move. And I played a novelty now. Bishop c5. And then queen f3. My move is new and it's better. You see, like even in an offhand game, I'm improving chess theory. Queen f3. Oh no, the best move by Mule Skinner.
you play queen f3 first, it transposes, and then I play d5. So the, the thing is, you just overlook the check on d4. You should play e5. This is critical. e5, and um, I don't know what the best line is. I guess knight e4. Bishop takes e4, d takes e4, queen takes e4, and we have compensation for the pawn. But there's a lot of weak light squares all over the place, so I think that black has a really good comp. Probably a draw in like an opposite color bishop ending would be extremely likely here. You know, this this should be a draw. White structure is not great, he has a lot of weaknesses. Um, basically an almost perfect opening. All right, let's play Liquor Mart. Um, he is an NM. It'll be good to play a strong player. And then we'll play the rest of you guys who we have time to play. Um, yesterday in my, my viewer tournament, I didn't get to face uh, too many strong players because whatever reason, they didn't show up. Um, sometimes the viewer tournament on Tuesdays is fairly strong. I'm going to play F4 if he's here. I'm not sure. He may not have expected to play. So sometimes people... When they're at the bottom of the list, they step away from the they step away from the stream, and then they go to the bathroom for like ten minutes. I thought we'll let him play, and then go back to the rest of the guys. But if not, he can just rechallenge me if he left the the area. Knight c six broke his reign. At least you learned something new. Um, Okay, Liquor Mark can re-challenge me. Let's go back to you other guys. Lousy, dirty, cheater. We'll play the same thing. We'll play the F4. Only 200 more rating points, and I can be level with an NM. Not bad, man. You're playing better. Lousy, dirty, cheater is not going to be here, too. You guys... You guys suck, man. Grandmaster Medvedge is online. Hungarian's in the house. You guys think my end game technique is good. Jesus, you should see his. I try to come up with cheapos when I play him. We just try to trick him tactically. Alright. Um, well, we missed Lousy Dirty Cheater. Let's get a couple other challenges out there, I guess. I don't know. Trina Ren. And Too Much Love. It's a conspiracy. Where are you people? This is going to be like the third play in a row. Liquor Mark is back. Okay. Um, unusual opening with black. That's fun. All right. Finally, we get to do something fun with the black pieces. Please don't play the London system. Okay. No matter what you do. Even if you do that, I'll come up with something interesting. But it's really hard to find something. See, he's trying to do the London system. He's just going to do it on, like, move two, move three. Um, I'm scared the London system will happen. And basically, I need to do something unusual anyway. He prevented the Budapest, of course. I wanted to play the Budapest Gambit. But this guy's pretty strong. 2133, wow. His classical rating is a lot higher than his blitz, so he's not a blitz player. Um, all right, let's try a6. He plays g3. Oh, man, come on, at least play c4. I mean, that would be more fun. He's not playing the c pawn, which makes, like, a situation I don't have anything to kind of bite on now without way playing c4. But I want to counter Fianchetto, and b6 is kind of passive. If I play b6, it's like, why did I play a6? This is a normal line. I don't know what it's called. You know, these lines where you do like a6 and b5 and c5 against g3 type formations. It doesn't really have a name, I guess. I was kind of wondering... Well, it's, it's like basically like you're doing some kind of weird setup against the Grunfeld with colors reversed. Like he's doing a Grunfeld setup and I'm, I'm doing like a non-committal 
B4 type of thing. Now C3 is, is ultra solid. I think we need to play C5. That's the typical breakthrough in the queen side area. Now pawn takes pawn is probably fine. Other moves. I don't know though, he takes back with the pawn into this really boring position, but I guess black is okay. I hate the symmetrical kind of structure you can get here. Taking with the knight isn't very dynamic either. So what can you say? Um, very safe position for white. He's like anti weird openings opening. Yeah, it's like a reverse like B4 against the Grunfeld type of thing. Basically a kind of Polish defense. I guess that's what it's called and it should be. Just that we're not playing it straight away, you know, like D4, B5. That's technically the Polish defense, right? Now he's trying to play e4. We could allow e4. We may not have a lot of choices. I mean, d5 seems seems kind of illogical now. His knight is not on a great square. That's good. <clears throat> Maybe knight to d7. And I can play it like a Lopez with, with e4, e5, if I want to. If I want to. Um, yeah, I don't like d5, and I don't like knight e4. Knight e4 is asking for trouble. I have to let him have his fun and eat it too. Yeah, he'll probably play e4, and then I decide whether I want to allow e5 or play e5 myself. If I allow e5, ultimately he'll end up with a knight coming to e4, which is pretty nasty. If I go into the Lopez type of structure, it's probably a little more stable for me, but white should be slightly better there. It's not really a great Lopez for black. But this is like a super conservative move. He's not even committing to playing e4. kind of like playing with mule skinner like we didn't cross the line of demarcation nobody wants to like take any risks um however like in these variations if he plays e5 in this type of structure with the bishop on b2 i guess his attack is not very dangerous i could allow e5 maybe and his bishop would be dead on b2 but it's a safe player with symmetrical structure, I would be like pulling my hair out if this was a tournament game, thinking like, how the hell am I gonna beat this guy? He's 300 points lower, but I have no clue how I can win this position. Symmetric, symmetric, like really solid. Okay, it's never easy to win with black against anybody, unless they go crazy, you know? He's prevented me from playing e5 now. On the other hand, I think that his um, his e5 is a little less dangerous than it was before. It's still still a possibility, though. I could even play like knight e8, maybe.
I'm just looking for tactics with e5. We take everything, then play knight g4 at the end. And then drop a knight with um, priest, capture, nice. Then he'd be threatening mate while he took my knight off on g4. Never mind. Um, queen b6 looks normal. I'm definitely getting a little worried about this. A knight coming to e4 would be very disruptive. But I don't have any kind of counterplay here. <clears throat> so I guess we ought to consider e5, knight e8, Catalan style solution. Possibly a better alternative to 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 playing on knight d5. Just super safe. He's thirteen fifty one bullet is eleven games. Um not a bullet player, huh? Me neither. This way my rook would have some activity. The other rook comes to c eight and I reserve f eight and e eight for my minor pieces to retreat. Ninety eight particularly, not blocking my rook on f eight. Seems like white is just a tiny bit better. It's a little hard to do anything. I might have I might have e5 at some point based on f2 tactics and the d file. What's up guys? Thanks for watching, tuning in. Um he's now playing queen e2. Super safe move. Negating my my stuff again. not allowing me any tricks with f2 very safe player not a guy who likes to take a lot of risks um d5 e5 knight e4 is is interesting but i just don't have enough play there he just takes it and plays like knight to d2 and i don't have any sort of play What to do now? I'm not really sure. I'm going to curl up into like a little ball and hope that nobody hurts me. <laughs> uh, this isn't really part of the plan. Maybe I should have played queen a7, queen a8 or something like that. Okay, knight e8 is not bad. This is my only other maneuver, it looks like. I could have tried that. It didn't occur to me till it was too late. Now it might be too late. We're not crossing the fourth rank. I mean, I'm on the fourth rank. He's on his fourth rank. Nobody's crossing into enemy territory. Queen b6 is sort of lame because I might give him like a4 at some point, not guarding this, I don't know. I guess I'll play h6 if I have to on the king's side. Nobody wants to disturb the balance. You could play h4, h6, for example. Now I regret playing knight e8. Now his f pawn is ready to move. But I can play e5 here with double edge to give him I gotta do something though he'll just run me over going into the Lopez now right
preempting knight f5. We can challenge a knight on d5 with our knight. h4 is strong. I'll probably have to exchange a set of rooks to get my rook off of c8, where it's like a target to bishop on h3. I don't know if I should have played e5, though. It was kind of risky. I don't think I would disturb the balance, though, in a long game, I don't know. Obviously, I can make this exchange at any point. If he ends up playing like g4, maybe I can, maybe I can try for something based on, he closed the center now, wow. Just when I was thinking about playing like g6, bishop h6, probably worth a try. <laughs> Bishop on b7, not great in this Lopez situation. This is an idea. But, um, I don't like this file being his property. It's basically equal with chances for both sides to mess up. Um, that would be my evaluation. Problem is all my pieces want to go to. All my pieces want to go to the same place. I think we're gonna need to stop a four. Strong positional player. Don't get too many games like this on my stream in Blitz. Most people like to play tactically or take a lot of risks. And um, very rarely do I get people who are so solid. That bishop's had enough on b7. Where is he going? Okay, I have f5 maybe. I'm a little concerned about this. I've got to keep my a6 pawn protected, actually. How about f5 for me? What's going on? Bishop c1. He stopped bishop g5. doing just randomly taking space without a plan maybe we can flag him h4 isn't isn't good
game is like a headache. Lost on time here. <laughs> Jesus, dude. What a game. I don't know if anybody made any mistakes, like the entire game. The computer says I did. The computer says he did. So it's just, it's like equal. It's been equal pretty much most of the game. I mean, I think he has a space advantage in the beginning. But, um, all right. Liquor Mark and Ayeste. And um, I thought we'll play Liquor Mark, even though he was later than the others. He is a national master. Thought it would be fun. I'm going to play the Polish delayed here. Hey, everybody. What's up? I don't like the way they changed the Twitch um, screen that. The channel feed is not at the top of the of the left side. Um, I like the channel feed being there so people could see like what my next event was. That's annoying. We're basically playing the same thing now with colors reversed. Yeah, Arsenal fan was saying how he can be in 200 points level with a national master. I've noticed a lot of people here are really underrated um, lately. Like not always, but lately. Um, like everyone I play who's like yesterday in the Blitz tournament, um, I ran. Almost all of my opponents, I'm like, they're underrated. I was kind of joking about it, but I'm half serious, you know. Here's a national master who's like 2056. I mean, you know, I used to think that Lee Chess ratings were, were deflate were like inflated, but I'm starting to think that's not the case. Okay, we don't have to worry about E4 necessarily here. But time is money. If he plays E4, he's a little overextended. It's Better not to allow it, though, probably. Um, I'd rather not say I did. So it's basically similar to the last game, but different, because he's he's playing a different type of setup. I mean, our last opponent was a d4 game. This player is playing with e5, basically a king's Indian attack against the hedgehog, which I think is quite OK for black. I don't like a, like when black plays like f5 in these type of positions. So I was thinking of even playing d4 here and then locking up the king's side. Let's try it for fun. Turning it into a kind of French or closed Sicilian if you like. It's like an e, e6, e6 closed Sicilian. I'm not a French player, but I am trying to play unusual openings today, so we'll give it a shot. We're not going to castle into the attack, necessarily. Queen b3 looks good. Standard French move. Here we have to mix, like, defense with with slowly trying to gain a space advantage. I 
I remember one time a very bad experience. I had a match with another master when I was like 2200 and I did try to do the hedgehog against the King's Indian attack, but in a normal way where I just castled into it, you know, and I got, I got beaten up because I don't think the hedgehog where you just tried, if I just were to castle there instead of playing d4, I don't think those positions are really very good for me. Um, in this sort of situation where I just routinely castle. Besides the fact that I might drop a piece to e4, um, you know, assuming that I don't do that, I just strategically don't really trust it that much. Um, the question is, should I fear f4 or not, first of all? We're going to need to move our knight, I guess. In any case, I guess you could consider knight a3, knight c2. That's kind of a weird deployment. But it wouldn't obstruct the, it wouldn't obstruct the bishop on b2. That's true. Are you Tendulkar? Knight a6, speak of the devil. Um... You know, I don't know where to castle. I had a friend who used to love to do this. <laughs> like, every game when he was black, he would play the French and then not castle and try to, like, create, like, totally blocked positions um, across the board. Bishop e6. Yeah, that's uncomfortable. I don't like being in that pin. Not really sure. I guess we'll put the king on g2, Gurganiza style here. Oh. Doesn't care. Um, I could play g4. Actually, now g4 makes some sense, but now it doesn't make some sense. Well, anyways. Maybe I have to play f3. Or even f4. Anti-positional at best. Very systematic play by black. This is a weird move to play by me. But I'm afraid I've walked into this guy's favorite type of position, you know, like he's playing this against everything, the Kings of the Attack. He seems very at home here. maybe f4 trying to get some breathing room I can't stand positions like this honestly <laughs> I, would, I would never play this in a serious game um, plus in blitz it's like a nightmare you just um, you know you have to calculate a lot of maneuvers and stuff Oh. Well, at least it's not protected. I do have knight e5, which is very disruptive. If he plays knight f6, which he wants to do here. I don't play the French, and I don't like positions like this, <laughs> but, but okay, I thought, well, 
My original plan was to castle queenside. Then I was silly and I played king f1, king g2, which was falling into the trap, basically. Now I'm not sure what's going on, but I think he was good before. Now there could be some problems. Keeping f5 protected. Still, it's not that simple. I can't really up the pressure on f5 without playing g4, which would be extremely radical. Maybe I can play knight e5 at some point. I guess that's the plan. Yeah, I'm definitely playing for knight e5. This is weird, but knights against bishops in a closed position. It looks like a stonewall Dutch now. Playing the white side of the Stonewall Dutch. Still black's position looks hard to break down. Play Queen C7. He just hung a piece and I didn't take it, but he had F4. But then I guess I would have just had Rook G6 check. Would have been good to take that piece, probably. There is an increment, so we can't play absolutely for time here. Might have been safer to play rook h8 check, but then what do I do? Um, I wasn't sure. This slows down his pressure on the f file. We are embedded files on... Okay, what is that, man? That is like... Not mate, but looks like mate. We win a piece. We win a piece with, with bishop f5 check and take on g4, but I think he was... He was worse at the end, but before he was better. He was definitely better initially. When he started the king side attack, I thought... I felt like black is better here. Yeah, h takes g, h takes g. I did f4, which may be necessary, but strategically it feels like black is slightly better here. Okay guys, um, too much love. I yes, I've got to play first, and um, if this is the last game, that'll be it. I yes, they are subscriber. Bishop g6 was a bad move, unprotected, putting you in that pin you couldn't get out of. Um, yeah, you were better before that. All right, guys, possibly the last game for today, unless it's a fast one. Um, I'm going to play, what are we going to play? The Saragossa opening. Nice game, NM. Saragossa. Saragossa C. Oh, yes, they don't tell me you're not here. All right, there you are. So now what? Can we do the Budapest Gambit yet? Not really. Not after playing C3. Um, we need to find something else. Dutch. Deferred Dutch. Birds opening. NN. In the old books, that was no name. Alexander Alekhin versus No Name, simultaneous, 1917, F4. It's a weird Dutch type of thing. Yeah, C6 is really tough. I hate dealing with that. 
basically the Slav against the Dutch. Yeah, this is actually, I played a game like this with like a quick Queen C7, E5, it's not a bad setup for black. I think that's very reasonable. E4 maybe? I was talking about how I don't like the closed Sicilian. <laughs> this feels a little closed Sicilian y, if that's an adjective. Um, but now we got them to be a little bit passive, which is good. I like it when they're passive. Okay, knight f3. If you're playing e6, then you're not playing e5, and that's good for my Dutch defense or whatever this is. We beat him to the punch. But objectively, what's the best move for black there? Probably like take an e5. It looks like a weird Karo Khan. Bishop e3, a Kopek, RIP. Dr. Dan. I never played Dr. Dan in a tournament game. We d actually, we did in quick play, but never in a, never in a long game. D takes E4. It's a fellow New Englander. The Kopak system. So just an am amorphous closed game of sorts. Bishop C5. I guess we should just pretend I'm playing the white side of some kind of Pierce or something. We'll just pretend I was playing the white side of the of the um, Austrian attack, and then Black played c5, and I took on c5, and here we are. It's not really a bird's opening, but Nimzovich would be happy with White's game here, I think. I can even play b4 and bishop e3. Knight g4. But there are other, other options too. b4 looks right. I don't like weakening my queen side, but heck, it's probably... <laughs> the benefits outweigh the, um, the detriments with a b4. We gotta get him off the diagonal. Nimzovich used this in the advanced French. There's also knight a3 to c4, which could be very good. Or knight d2 to c4. Or knight d2 to e4. My only downside is that I've weakened my queen side with, with b4, but it seems like a small price to pay for the space advantage. I've got a big space advantage now. Knight a3 would slow down a5 as well. He'll move the queen, then knight c4. But I could also just simply play bishop e3. Seems more natural to play like e5, allow knight d5 and get a knight to e4. In order to do that, I have to play knight d2 and then knight e4. The a5 will come in on the queen side at some point, which is very unpleasant for me. So I've got to be prepared for this. That's going to happen. Bishop e3, bishop d4. What would Nimzovich do? Could even play a4, but that allows a5. It's really a tough call. I don't know what the best setup is here. Queen c7. Maybe I should castle now. I was thinking knight c4. But then b4. I mean b5, knight a5 gets a little weird. Well, we gotta play something we're gonna lose on time. So...
course, at b5, I could also play knight e5. But I don't like a5 from black. Okay, this is just like an outright pawn drop, it looks like. Looks like. That's what I said. This looks really dubious for black. <clears throat> I'm just taking and playing knight takes, and then he plays bishop d6. And then I play knight c4, then he plays bishop takes f4, then I play e5. Winning the game. Unless he has an intermezzo with like bishop g4. Which wins for him. Seriously, knight takes e5, bishop d6. Knight c4. Bishop takes f4. e5. Bishop g4. There I must have some kind of move, no? I don't know. Ah. Okay, so we've got to do this a different way. But if I do it that way, he has a defense too. Knight c4. Bishop takes f4, e5, bishop g4. Queen f2, bishop takes c1. We've got to be better there. I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to spend all day thinking about this. Um, he's got only one line. I can get in knight e6 check and mess up his king with more active development. I have to be better. I didn't see a forced win, though. Oh, honestly, I missed it. He could just simply go there. But Black's position is looking kind of dubious. Castles. Knight takes c3. I don't know why I missed this obvious move. If I castle, he takes on c3. I mean, c1. I take on c1, then he gets away. So I have to play the knight check. Pretty much a no-brainer, right? Um, I was just hoping for better than this, but I guess this is pretty good. I mean, his king is totally messed up. He has no development. Guys, last game for today. You got slums in Maine. I was thinking the other day, Soltigo, Maine is one of the one of the only states well there's probably a lot of them still. No chess grandmaster has ever come from Maine. Well then again there's no chess grandmaster from Vermont either. Josh Friedel came from New Hampshire. Um, the far north Maine doesn't have a big chess scene. I guess it's just too isolated. It's like Alaska. <laughs> sorry to compare your state to Alaska. And I'm sorry for offending the Alaskans here in the audience. But, um... Brian Smith became a GM. And he's from Alaska. So they're represented. Is Twitch a significant source of income for me? Um, no. All right, knight takes c3. You know, I don't think we're, we're ever going to make a significant amount of income with chess, period. Um, <laughs> in any way. It depends on how you define significant. 
That would be a better question. Is chess a significant source of income for me? I don't have a significant source of income, um, unfortunately. I used to play poker for like eight years, and then I had sometimes a significant source of income, but it wasn't very consistent. With chess, there's no significant income. It's like a kind of insignificant income. But I didn't decide to be a chess player for money. I would have gone into like something where I used my college degree if I wanted money. So we 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 make our choices in life, and <laughs> trying to make money from chess is is awkward. Just enough to get by, I guess. But Twitch is not really. You know, you got to have a really big audience on Twitch. I mean, for video gamers that's fine you know they can have thousands of viewers and and really generate a good income but like magnus carlson could probably eke out a living by streaming on twitch you know i, I just i don't think of it as you know i'm not thinking about it in terms of like trying to make money really it's just um just something that's fun and um we can kind of be active chess wise from home Will you apply to GM? I can't apply to GM. I mean, it's, it's something you either like earn or you don't. Bishop h6 just resigned here. I have bishop, bishop e3. Uh, no, the GM title, I don't have any norms. I came really close once, but um, I would need to really improve my game. I'm trying to work on getting back to a decent rating at the moment. So hopefully in the next couple of years, I can... I can get my rating back to like a respectable level because now it's kind of low. Um, I'm basically like 80 or 90 points below my peak and um, I'd like to correct that so hopefully it's not too late. Anyway guys, it was fun today. Weird openings, some unusual stuff, mostly like B4, B5, Polish opening type of stuff. I guess that what, what happened there? Um, I didn't like the E6 move in the opening. The opening seems okay. Yeah, you should just like take on e4 and play e5 and get your fair share of the center, you know, with a good game there. Okay, guys, I'm going to close it out. Um, you donated Excuse Factory. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, I'll donate more a game for a game. Uh, I can't. I have to go. Um, I have another commitment, so I have to record a video for someone right now. I can't hang out and play any more games. But I really appreciate the donations, guys. Um, Today I have, a, I have a video recording shortly, so I cannot, I cannot hang out and, uh, and play more. Um, yeah, it's no good to play E6, I guess. To... Anyway, guys, um, I don't travel the U.S. much. I do go, like, for two months, um, usually once a year in July and August. Um, hopefully that will be the case again this year, but who knows what the future will hold. Um, next time, Excuse Factory. Sounds good. I'm going to be streaming um, my subscriber stream Thursday night guys and uh, basically we, we focus on like you know analyzing games and and playing blitz with subscribers Thursday night at 7 p.m. I had a really bad stream last time there were very few viewers because of like 10 other chess streamers and uh, and the st. Louis thing and the computer championship so hopefully tomorrow night it won't be quite as bad as last week where uh, there wasn't a very good audience if it continues to be a problem on Thursday night, maybe I'll like change the, the Thursday stream time. But for now, I'm going to leave it for another week at 7 p.m. Um, CET here, our subscriber stream tomorrow night. So I will see you guys then. And um, also Friday morning and Sunday, I'm doing a simul, um, probably 30-30. Every Sunday night at 6.30 p.m. CET, I do a simul here on Lee Chess. There is a computer, you know, I don't know if it's over yet. They were doing a computer chess championship like thing i mean that's been going on for like a couple weeks now it goes on forever anyway guys i will see you later um take care and uh we'll see you tomorrow night at 7 p.m here on lee chess and twitch thanks for watching i'll see you guys later good games bye bye thanks soltigo for for being a mod here later guys bye